your hosts, Steve Dangle, Adam Wilde, and Jesse Blake. Back in the studio with a couple of pissy boys. <laughs> Why are you being so pissy? Oh, God. Steve? Yeah? Hey, Jesse. Yeah. You're acting a little pissy today. Any reason why you're such a pissy boy? Why are you being so pissy about his I'm opening topic? I'm so happy that NHL by Maddie is back. Oh, we're so blessed. Why Why can't they add him to the uh, EA Sports NHL 23 where, you know, you can read the social media stuff? It's got it. <laughs> Maddie's Twitter account's got to be on that, right? That'd be why, why, why is that not on there? Because that feature right now, as, as a general manager in the game, right. like that feature is pretty much useless because it'll just be like, oh, the head coach got fired and it's, there's nothing relevant there. If you had a spicy tweeter, it'd actually make it something you'd go and check. Like you should have some some enemy members of the media, no matter yeah. where you're the GM, oh, right? yeah. who just go at you no matter what happens. It should be, well, th there was the Mitchell Itsu campaign from the uh, the previous NHL where I was allowed to be part of it. And where you, uh, what? Mitchell Itsu is a character in the game, and they had all these people from the hockey world talk about how amazing Mitchell Itsu is. And I did that too. So I'm doing like a fake reaction video. Mitchell Itsu, this kid's unbelievable. And his last name is spelled It's You. It's clever, Jesse. I want to see Mitchell Itsu. You what were, a piss baby. You were <laughs> a part of a campaign for EA Sports? It was in the damn trailer. That's yeah, for cool. which NHL game? See, we've talked about this so many times. I thought you were being sarcastic. No, I've forgotten. Twenty one. Did you know this? I think, we, I think we did talk about. We it. We talked about how it's weird that I was in the trailer for NHL twenty one and then didn't even get codes for NHL twenty two. <laughs> Myrtle always gets it. I don't. Myrtle remember. always gets. That's how I got it. I got a code from Myrtle. That's how I got the game. Amazing. No joke. Amazing. Well, I I, I think uh, obviously if you haven't heard the clip yet, even if you have heard the clip, you got to hear it again. Um, uh, NHL by Maddie. If for for those who've been listening for a long time, Jim Matheson is a like I think a reporter for like fifty years or something in Edmonton. Uh, we he came up in the holiday episodes when we were doing. Oh, he uh, did. Okay, some of the not best ofs, but you know what I mean. Right. So his Twitter account was NHL by Maddie for a long, long time. Now it's Jim Matheson NHL and NHL by Maddie. None of us could really figure out. I remember Tim and Sid even tweeting, going like, "Is this a parody account or does this person believe this?" We never really got. An answer on that, but it was hacked. So then he had to start another account. <laughs> NHL by Maddie at his peak was at like 30,000, 40,000 followers. Yeah. Now I think he's at 8,000 or something. But man, he used to have the spiciest takes. And they used to be so much fun because it was like, this is, this is Looney Tunes. And so now I'm beginning to think that that Twitter account, while never verified, it was it never got the blue check mark. I think it was real. Like, who's his employer? Just get him verified. Yeah. Just get him verified. That's all. Yeah. I don't know. I mean, the dude has the, uh, what is it? The Elmer Ferguson Award. They call him Hockey Hall of Fame reporter. He's an honored member of the Hockey Hall of Fame. Right. Yeah, yeah, Honored yeah. by the Hockey Hall of Fame, however it works. Get him verified, for God's sake. Because when you get him verified, then you don't fall victim to fake accounts like any... Uh, Jim, it's Jim, Jim Matheson NHL, which well, is his real one. Is but, the current real account? Yes. Yeah, okay. but then there's Jim Matheson NH capital I, which looks <laughs> identical. Oh, <no. laughs> we'll talk about that in a second yeah. and how it trips some people up. So, if you <laughs> if you missed it, let's play it, Jesse. Jim Matheson, Leon Dreisaitl. Lots of reasons for why the owners are playing the way they are in terms of winning and losing. What do you think is the number one reason? for the losses now is there is there one thing that you in your own mind you're saying we got to get better at that yeah we have we have to get better at everything would you like to expand on that no nope. you can do that you know everything why are you so pissy hmm? <laughs> so pissy? i'm not i'm just I, answering your yeah question. you are whenever i ask you a question i gave you an answer not very good one. Okay. <laughs> well, I have one more for you. <laughs> and then he follows it up. on the ice. Last game against Ottawa. Is that a good thing when you show it so the other team knows you're frustrated? Yeah, it's a great thing for sure. Good. Yeah. How did the PR person not Lost step in before I, that? That was the first thing I thought of. Everyone was focusing on pissy, and all I could think of was 
Steve Keogh growing two more arms out of his torso <laughs> like Goro from Mortal Kombat and beating me to a pulp if I ever did that. Honestly, that so, would happen in Toronto. You'd get killed for yeah, that. So Steve Keogh is one of, I don't know if it's still this way, but he's like the head media guy for the Leafs. There was a time where he was their shortest media guy and he was like, he's 6'3". Yep. There was this other dude who was like six, seven. It was just four giants. And you're like, yeah, okay. I guess no more questions then. And I cannot believe he got a follow-up. The follow-up's insane. I can't believe it. It's the craziest part about the whole clip. Everyone's focusing on pissy. I cannot believe that, A, he was allowed to ask a follow-up and that Dreisaitl answered him. Oh, yeah. Dreisaitl starts smiling. You see his little smirk by the end of it. Yeah. You know, because he, he realized he's he's arguing with an old man. You know, he's going back and forth. He, he says, why are you so pissy? He's like, I'm not. He's like, yes, you are. Like, that, yeah. that, that's yeah. an interaction. I'll tell that you happens. how you feel. <laughs> so d- there was some debate about who started this. Uh, so Dreisaitl is... What do you mean? He is... No, no, wait. Visually, for if, if you're listening, Dreisaitl does make a face. Mm-hmm. He got makes, a couple. He makes he makes a few faces, but the first face comes before the question is even finished. For why the right? owners are playing the way but they are in terms of winning and losing. Is he that much of a jerk? Or did Jim Matheson write something that so, got so, this guy pissed so off? Because that, that attitude doesn't fall out of the sky. Right, but I think, actually, I think that... what. Every Oilers reporter since then has it. You can disagree with everything else they've said, but they've all said Leon's a really tough interview, and usually it has been making efforts this year to be better with the press, but is always a bit ornery. That's that's the that's the. And listen, I'm not I'm I'm not telling you that I'm I'm just telling you that for context. I'm not defending any sides here, but I'm just saying Leon Drysital, not known for a great quote with the press, kind of known for being a little bit combative with the press. Can I do an impression of all of those reporters? Uh, you can. Oh, Leon's making my job hard. <laughs> well, okay, can we... I would like to go back. Hey. hey. I would like to go back to the beginning. Can you play the first... That wasn't even good. Play the first half of that, and I'll tell you when to stop. Okay, Jesse? All right. No. no. The way they are in terms Do your of job! Lots of <laughs> reasons for why the owners are playing the way they are in terms of winning and losing. What do you think's the number one reason? It's making for- a face. The losses now. Is there is there one thing that you in your own mind you're saying we got to get better at that? Yeah, we ha- we have to get better at everything. Would you like to expand on that? No. Nope. You can do that. You know everything. Why are you so pissy? All right, stop, stop for a second. Okay, now. <laughs> Now I have you to know tell the you. title of the show is pissy, right? Like, yeah, of course. Uh, no. So here's, here's no, what, not oh, on YouTube. Yeah. Oh, YouTube, no, get mad that's, at that. That's, okay, here's damn. what I want to say. Here's what I want to say. With that, with dollar that signs, answer, okay. what was wrong with the answer? I watched that and I thought the answer is like we need to get better at everything. They do. They're not scoring. They can't defend, and their goaltending's terrible. So, I don't know what. Like, it's. I think Leon's correct. Yeah. What do you want? What else do you want him to say? It's it's an escalation. So Matheson's not done his question. Leon's already smirking, shaking his head at him. And he gives a, a not very good answer. It's there. It's not bad, though. Mm-hmm. It's, you care? It's... Him saying, you know everything, is punching back. Yeah, so like, wait. That's a, that's a counter shot. So, so wait. <laughs> no, you're skipping steps. <laughs> There's all sorts of microaggressions in between. Because it's, it's the little head shake... Yeah, followed by an answer that you know what it it in video and audio is poor, but he's a writer. I think it would have uh, read well. Mm-hmm. Which everything we need to improve on everything. There's a nice quippy. That's little, what I meant. Yeah, yeah. No, I, I, so I agree on that. And then, but you want to expand on that? You can't tell me there wasn't some stank on that because a lot of people are focusing <laughs> on dry saddle going. You know everything. You want to expand on that? If someone not my dad ever spoke to me that way, I'd kick them in the neck. Are you, you want to expand on that? I want to expand my fist in your mouth. How about that? What? So anyway, then Leon takes it up a notch and then Jim takes it up another notch. Right. And all of a sudden we got a thing. We got a thing. Why do reporters feel like these players owe them something? 
and that they, they there's a need here to fight with this guy because he's not getting the answers he wants. And he and he's I don't know if he's frustrated with the team. Matheson I'm talking about here. I don't know if Matheson's frustrated with Dry specifically, but he clearly he wants something out of him. He's not getting any it, it upsets him. Why does this interaction upset Jim Matheson? I well, I think Jim Matheson would say, why did this interaction upset Leon Dreisaitl? Clearly something was written and Leon didn't like it. I think we can agree there's elements of they're both a little wrong. Oh, I think so. Sure, for yeah. sure. No, now, you can now blame one more than the here's other. Here's what you but... don't need to do. Here's what you don't need to do. Okay? You don't need to... And you don't need to grandstand. You don't need to, in a public setting... You know, everybody... Here's the thing. Every, every journalist uh, born before 1970... Jumped to Jim Matheson's uh, 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 defense here. Why that year? Yeah. Why? Well, I think you know. And the moon landing. And listen, I'm not saying that Jim Matheson is completely in the wrong here, but he's clearly grandstanding. Saying Jim knows, like everybody was talking about this, and I think we got to talk about the reporter reaction to this reporter. Mm -hmm. Everybody knows that if you were to have a tense interaction, and and players and media sometimes do that off camera in a in a dressing room. You would go and you'd sit and you go, listen, I didn't like this. And the person goes, I didn't like this. Okay, well, you know what? I apologize or whatever. You go your separate ways. You move on because you got to work together. But Jim knows this is a very public setting. He knows there's a speaker. He knows everybody's going to see this. And he knows it's going to go viral later. And don't tell me that Jim Matheson does not know viral tweets. Because Jim Matheson was the definition of viral tweets for like four straight years there. But did he and know? He knew. Yeah, and so know. what he decided to do... Being a, whatever, 50 fucking year veteran Hall of Famer, is he decided to engage a 25-year-old and poke him. Adam, why are you getting so pissy? That's what I mean. Why are you so, getting so... I love you have hit pissy like Draco Malfoy. Oh, uh, yeah. Pissy. <laughs> I expect Hard the re reporter in not, uh, probably every situation to be the bigger person. So if the report... So as the other, <laughs> other side of that, the reporter be like, well, he's a, he's a leader on this team. Shouldn't he also be... Uh, shouldn't he also be expected to be professional at all times? Oh, God. You Wait. know that's what... Yeah. You know, that's the and I roll my eyes and I, I walk yes. away. So, here, so uh, getting back to what you were asking there, Jesse, about like why why do writers feel like players owe them something? It's, it's not something I can adequately answer because uh, CJ was talking about something separately earlier this week about... Um, talking to players in person and being able to tell their stories, um, being able to speak to players in person allows him as a writer to tell their stories better. And he told a great story about, I think it was Clark MacArthur from 2013 and things weren't going right for him. And he was a healthy scratch in the playoffs and he sees him talking to like the team psychologist or whatever, whatever for an hour. And he spoke to him about it after. And you know, Clark MacArthur explains the whole thing. He's just like, I'm scoring tonight. And then he did. You know, so seeing seeing him in person allowed him to tell that story, and it's interesting, and it brings fans closer to the team, et cetera, et cetera. It makes them into more human beings than hockey players. But then there's me, who's like, I've never really relied on player quotes at all. So whenever I've gone out to an event and I wasn't able to get them, or the quotes sucked, we just made do and did other stuff. So, like, what if? There was no post-game press conference. Oh, well, it's, there's just nothing to talk about then. How do we hold them accountable? The How league has to shut down. The NHL can't exist. Uh, no, no. Like, I think you'll be fine. <laughs> yeah. I think you'll yeah, those, be... Those sarcasm. No, I know. <laughs> I know. I, but, like... So, so it, I, I want to talk about the, the reporter reaction to yeah. this. Because that was a big part of what happened yesterday and the, and the reaction online. And it did get pretty toxic. And I... I don't think we're going to get, go there here. But, you know, I, I think I've had my run-ins with media before. And I'm in the media. The media. And, you know, I think, I think there's a particular... I, I think right now in Edmonton, there's a lot of strain. You know, you got to look at this In situation. the world. <laughs> yeah, but in Edmonton specifically with the, with the team, yeah. with where it's going. Um, it's, you know, we've seen it in Toronto when things are bad and they're bad for a long time and there's no real easy solution out. You get blowups like you got with Festchuk and Kessel, where you know Festchuk yep. is grandstanding. He was, he was. Do you think you're hard to coach? And Phil Kessel said, "Art, this guy's an idiot." Like, you know, that's the that's the you know Festchuk asked that question because he wanted to write an article about it, 
right? He wanted to, and he also, let's be honest, he wanted to be in, in the media about that. He wanted to be that guy. And I think Jim, maybe, in the same sense, was probably like, I'm going to fucking try to embarrass you. And mm. I think that's, a, that's what it felt like. It I felt think... like, it felt like I, you know what? I'm, I'm, I'm sick of you treating me like shit, so now I'm going to call you back. I thought it was authentic red mist old man mad. Yeah. I don't think it was planned. I don't I don't think that was premeditated old man mad. I think that was just mm -hmm. God damn it, why are you so pissy? Leon, don't you know who I am? Like I got to feel there's a lead up to this. So there so has to be something. Here's what Ryan Rashog tweeted. Okay. And I'm going to paraphrase some of these, but he said, uh, it's been tense uh there basically, you know, at the at the press conference thing lately. Not surprised this happened. Dry Saddle does have a history of delivering dismissive answers at times, but he had been much better this season. It's clear he made an effort to engage more. That was until things came off the rails for the team. And I think it's fair to say the frustration has crept back in, in the picture on the ice and in the media room for him. Matty decided to hit back based on his history of exchanges with the player. Ideally, respect and decorum are maintained at all times, but this stuff happens. Clearly, the frustration is mutual between them. What I didn't like was this. Ryan, I thought, that, that's, you said it earlier. Clearly, both of the, is a little bit wrong. It's mm -hmm. a funny clip when you listen to it back because it doesn't harm anyone. It's uh -huh. very funny. But what oh, I yeah. did not like was the instant, this is normal, reaction. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I've known this man since forever, and this is normal. No, it's not. If this was normal, it wouldn't have been news. Mm -hmm. It's not normal. This is not normal. And by the way, let me let me just say, I verified. I asked CJ and I asked a bunch of other reporters over text last night. Hey, is this normal? You know what like, CJ is, said to is me? Is what normal? Is this kind of interact? Is this normal? Is that, that, wait, oh, there normal. Was that it wasn't? It's not normal to come out in public. It's normal, and you'll never see it. I don't is, even. No, is no, no, kind no. of what is what I was getting from the yes, sense of the that's old. That's what they said. Yeah, that's what they. But, but I don't think that's true. I don't think yeah. for the reporters I talked to, the reporters I talked to, CJ's like, no, that no. he said I, I haven't seen that is what he said. You know, CJ typically balanced. Mm -hmm. Um, but the report, some of the reporters I talked to said, um, no, and I would never speak to a player like that. Yeah. I'd be kicked out of the room, <laughs> and and so you know, and you, the PR person, man, you got to step in. But uh, <laughs> I, I'm shocked that that happened. And, and I get it. You're frustrated. But to say that this is completely normal and that just because a person's in the Hall of Fame or just because they've been around the game for 50 years or whatever it is. I don't know if it's 50 years. I keep saying 50 years. I don't know why. Doesn't make it not wrong. That, the, like, it's, I, I get that Leon Dreisaitl can be pissy with the media. I get it. He's not the only one. No, of course no, not. Dude, the NHL, Look at Connor McDavid. <laughs> the NHL is full of combative asshole quotes. Totally. And most of them are your favorite players. I mm -hmm. hate to spoil it but, for everybody. But, but, People on the talk, other side of that, like, to say that because a person has been around the game a long time that they're above reproach is also just wildly inaccurate. Just crazy wrong. And, and so it's okay if you're like, you know, Steve Simmons and, and this, I, I have to give this one credit because Steve, you sent this to me this morning. He retweeted the fake Jim Matheson account. So do you want me to read it? Yeah. Can I you got, read it? Because I got it to, read, read the fake Jim Matheson tweet and then the Steve Simmons retweet. I just, and to be clear, I'm not calling him a buffoon for retweeting the fake account. No, it's a good fake that. account. And also, yeah, you were like, is that the fake account? And I went, I looked at the handle and I went, oh, I guess it's not. And I had to be like, oh, it's an I, you tricky bastard. Yeah, 100%. So a fake Jim Matheson account tweeted, I'd like to thank my fellow scribes for having my back. It's not easy out here trying to get a quote or two from players who seem to have no respect for some of the game's toughest questions. That, by the way, is amazing method acting, the use of the word scribes. That is exactly what he would have said. Steve Simmons then quoted the fake account by saying, Jim Matheson covered the most star-studded team in NHL history. He had great relationships with the biggest stars the game has ever known. He asked good questions. Then in the heyday of the Edmonton Oilers, he still asked them now. So let me ask you this. What's harder to cover, a team that loses all the time or a team that wins all the time? <laughs> uh, fair enough. <laughs> no, I, I, Serious I, question. See, I see where you're going. And and. Losing's and, hard. And here's the thing. Uh, okay, Steve Simmons. And Steve worked in Calgary for a long, long time. Mm -hmm. My mom knew Steve back when she worked in Calgary. They got along really well. And we've had Steve on. I disagree with just about everything the guy says. But 
you don't need to blindly, you don't need to read me Jim Matheson's resume. You don't need right. to tell me that he had great relationships with Gretzky. Gretzky played his last game at Edmonton several weeks after I was born. I am 33 years old. It doesn't matter what happened then. Was this incident in its vacuum <laughs> yeah. the wrong thing to do? That has nothing to do with any question you ever asked Gretzky. Right. And it doesn't mean that Jim Matheson's not a good... You know how I know Jim Matheson's a good reporter? Or at least does his job to his employer's satisfaction? Because he's been doing it since Gretzky played for the Oilers. Yeah. yeah. Like 40 years. Yes. But he Longer can than still I've been alive. be wrong in this scenario yes. and don't, not go out of player. Don't and tell me this is normal. Steve yeah. Smith. It's not. Steve Smith uh, blows a game for his team in overtime. It's, oh, man. He, he really screwed up. Hey, he has been playing hockey for his entire life. <laughs> Yeah, but tonight... He's a defenseman in the NHL. How dare you? Right. Yeah, but tonight he was a defenseman in the NHL and did a bad thing, though. Yeah, and you can't even skate. I've been getting a lot of those this week. Like, Jesus, I know. I told you. Like, he can't even skate. How dare you? Come on, man. The Twitter on, reaction... you got to be able to criticize. The Twitter reaction from the reporters, they acted like reporters are... are you can't criticize them. You know, I don't I don't know where Well, I think reporters get a lot of criticism, so I understand the defensiveness there. So are the players. <laughs> it, it, and exactly. So are I was the just players. Kidding, just honestly, you took the words right out of my mouth. It's so perfectly Sorry. said. No, no, no. Sorry. I'm not upset. That's exactly it. No, because and there are days where I'm like, "Hey man, I'm I'm kind of getting shit on a little bit here." And then I there's a little voice in the back of my head that's like, "Pull your head out of your ass. This is all you do." Yeah. <laughs> you know what I mean? Yeah. yeah. And 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 that's the thing. So, like, how about this? How about both sides got a little pissy? And um, and it's a funny fucking clip. I think Leon Dreisaitl, I don't think, really did. I, I don't, like, I don't think it was that wrong. I think the quote was fine. He's frustrated. And let's talk about this. Let's talk about the fact that the, the person who was at fault here the most the person that created this, Jesse, is the person that I continually <laughs> tell you is the root of all of this. That's Ken Holland. Ken Holland didn't oh. create this. Ken he Holland created, created this. this. No, no, let him speak. Ken Holland did this. <laughs> Ken Holland. This is a Ken Holland. This is a Ken Holland. Because the team's not winning. If here, the team here. was winning, are we having this interaction? Is no. anybody being pissy to each other? <laughs> Before you go off uh, on this Ken Holland tangent, I just want to say what a shame it is that the story uh, of the Edmonton Oilers yesterday is not Brendan Perlini. I know, and it was such a great clip. We should play that. Well, I, I, I want to play honest. it, but I, I want to I back up my Ken Holland thing. I would yeah? like to talk you about do something. That yes, okay. please let me sure. do this first. And then we'll end on a really good Brendan Perlini note. Okay, good. So from what I saw on Sportsnet this morning, and I had to look this up, and I haven't been able to find it. The, the Oilers, um, the Oilers uh, goaltending situation which I continually tell you is the problem. Well, part of it. Uh, is it's it's so bad that I think there's something in the neighborhood on the penalty kill at like an 870 since oh. the beginning of November. Let me run you through so far penalty kill for all of the goaltenders. And this is from Copper and Blue, uh, the Oilers fan site. Mike Smith has an 865. On the and he he's played six games on the Mik on the penalty kill. on the penalty kill. Oh, okay. I was about to say, oh, Miko Koskinen has an eight seventy four. Who? Hey, it's Stuart Skinner in COVID protocol has an uh, nine twenty nine. Holy smokes! Well, that's good. Yeah. Hey, uh, so it kind of feels like one step forward, two steps back with the Oilers. Yeah. Bad news that Stuart Skinner is on COVID protocol. Good news. Looks like Alex Stalock could be back in playing with them pretty soon. Mm -hmm. And we thought because of COVID, he could potentially be done for the season. Yep. So that's great news. Hooray. Hooray. I'm looking for all the but, rays but, of sunshine. But here's the pro Again, I keep saying, though, it's the goaltending Ken Holland problem. Yeah. So five on five, the league average, according to this article uh, in save percentage, is about 920. Five on five. Okay. 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 Mike Smith's got a 910. Miko Koskinen's got a 906. Mm. Stuart Skinner's got a 913. That's not a, not a single goalie within five points of, of in, in save percentage of the league average. Here's the problem, too. We saw Mark Spector on Sportsnet this morning uh, on, you know, doing the highlight show, and he was talking about it. Mark they Spector, who also quoted the fake Jim Matheson and defended Jim Matheson. Yes. Yeah, that was... He said... They're, they're friends. He said there's no... They're friends. 
He said there is Ken Holland's working the phones. There are no goalies to be had. Uh, At least ones that they want. Hmm. And so, so this is the thing. Ken Holland put himself in this position, and the players, and then Dave Tippett's job are probably going to answer for it. That's what's really going to happen here. Man. Well, because so this was the interesting thing. I was scouring Oilers uh, Reddit. Uh, they had a clip of us on there. They loved it. Really? No, they hated it. Oh. But um, <laughs> I was scouring it, and there was one that was. Uh, they that, said that, they said literally the, the every stere- <laughs> Yeah, they said literally every stereotypical thing I said they would. Oh, it's, it's, it's okay. Uh, That's all right. Uh, it's, you know, pull string. I but, don't mind. Uh, there was a topic. What do you really expect to change if Dave Tippett is fired? I know. Now. You know, I feel like we were asking that question earlier this season with Vancouver. What do you really expect to happen uh, once Travis Green gets fired? Well, Mm -hmm. I mean, it's hard to quantify an emotional reset. And this team sure seems like they need one, but I also understand it's maybe the one thing I'm sort of aligned with Ken Holland on. Seven the, coaches in ten years. The Oilers can't keep firing these guys. I don't guys, think they should man. fire them. They can't. They can't keep firing guys. He's gotta do something. He's got to change something. I'm, I'm gonna say a coaching change might work. Like, because what happened with Bruce Boudreaux wasn't even that he came in there and it was just a spark to the system. He came in there and they're also playing a different brand of hockey. Yep. He's playing a more open game of hockey where he's allowing these players to be their best. And if you get rid of Tippett and you bring in somebody and maybe you bring in a defensive coach who's going to clamp down on the issues that they have, maybe that's a little jolt to the system. You know, maybe it's just a a correction of what's happening on the ice specifically and not even just their, what's going on in their heads. I don't want them to try to defend. Uh, but th- that's my, what, yeah. may, what might make them win because they've been playing this really open brand of hockey where Tay, McDavid, Drysaddle, oh, go, go, go. Maybe it, Tippett's just not willing to change that and you bring in somebody new, just a fresh ideas, get them to play a little more defensive, team turns it around. I, I don't think they're playing open hockey with like, a structure that's conducive to winning, though. I think a lot of these guys, like I look at Brendan Perlini, that's a first-round pick, I'm pretty sure. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, his career hasn't exactly worked out like someone who is a first-round pick, but he's in the NHL, and mm-hmm. he's fairly regular. He's a decent enough player. All of these guys know how to score. All of them. Let them score. Let them play a more structured offensive style. Let them get some cookies. Let them score. Let them win these seven, six games. Let, uh, let's get them feeling good about themselves. And then after a while, you sort of go, all right, giving you your cookies. Today's broccoli day. <laughs> Tippett's not the guy who's making that change, though. This is the problem. So, And there's a long history in the NHL, I think I've said this a million times, of teams firing their head coach and then going on incredible runs. Consistently over the last since the lockout, Teams have wildly overperformed where they are by firing their head coach. I don't know why it works, but it seems to work. Sometimes it's just nice to have a different voice in your ear. And hockey more than any other sport. Yeah. The locker room, the, the characters, the, the work ethic, all of that changes with a nice little, ah. Yeah. Maybe Woodcroft is the, ah. Maybe. Right. We'll see. Um, you want to play Perlini's clip? Yeah. It's so good. Like, how many like days where uh, has he been like front and center and it gets ruined you know Here Let we go. Play. I think it can only go up you know like like I said I mean I've been on teams where it's lose six seven eight in a row and you can win six seven eight in a row just like that so um you know I'm always a obviously an, an optimistic guy and glass half full type of guy but I really think it's probably you you got like we got some of the best players in the world, the best player in the world, too, in there. So at any given moment, you know, good things can happen. And it's just, you got to keep going. You know, that, that's life. You know, you're, like, things are never going to be, you're going to win every single game. Your life is going to be rainbows and clouds and whatever not, you know. Like, life is ups and downs, ebbs and flows, right? So uh, it's, it's really almost, 
grateful for our group to go through periods like this because then when we'll get back to winning, it's like, ah, I like that feeling. You know, <laughs> I want to keep winning. Maybe before we weren't grateful enough for, for winning games and we have to go through something like this to learn and come through it better. When do you think you might get back to winning? <laughs> Say again? When do you think that time might come that you get back to winning? Next game. That was okay. SPAC. Oh. That was SPAC, right? Yes. <laughs> and he got a lot of shit for that, but it it gave birth to the best part. Next game. Next game. It get Yeah. Mm -hmm. There it is. Oh, there was some was... stank on that question though. Uh, there was a little bit. I mean, it's a good question and he needs to ask it, but there was a little bit of a little stank. It was I think unnecessary. It was, I think it was less stank <laughs> yeah. and more huh? like, you know, yeah, cuz you elbow can, nuts. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. You yeah. know what I mean? Oh, that's fair. And like you see in Perlini's reaction like, I guess he didn't, I, either there was stank there and he didn't react to it, or he didn't think there was stank there. But it gave birth to the best part. Next game. That's the clip they're playing if the Oilers win their next game. Yep. Yep. It's a great quote. It is a great quote. Oh, yeah. Uh, Perlini, um, by the way, 12th overall, 2014, and the pride of Guildford, England. Um, Was that real? Yeah. yeah. Apparently, according to HockeyDB, I didn't know that. Greg Wyshynski yeah. was on was on his shit yesterday and i just feel like there are times where you're like that is vintage greg wasinski mm -hmm. this tweet he retweeted the leon dry clip and he said having an entire city write about how the season is lost and the team is a smoldering pile of disaster and then asking why are you so pissy is the most self-fulfilling of prophecies <laughs> <laughs> and i like, think he's so right like i don't like when teams or players are just anti-media by nature right but now is a time where I think you can forgive the Oilers for being slightly anti media. Yeah. yeah. Because, like, not only are you losing every friggin' game, but people are writing about how you're losing every friggin' game. I'm not saying the reporters are wrong for writing the truth. No. But I, that's I, hilarious. And listen, we know, we know that, um, um, uh, I, we know that, that players, when you're in this, players are going to be mad at you sometimes. And so yeah. if, if a player were to say, hey, fuck you. We talked about this on, on text last night. I'd be like, okay, mm -hmm. fair enough. Probably. But oh, you know, if a leaf ever told me to fuck off, I'd be like earned. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. You, you get it. You, you yeah, get it. Like, okay, <laughs> fine. I, like, like I a hundred percent get it. Yeah. I feel a little bad. And also, <laughs> yeah, you're right. Correct. <laughs> yeah. Also, but, I'm going to keep doing it. But I, at the end of the day, both sides also need each other. We need, you know, the, mm -hmm. the quote. Quotes are needed to promote the game. The cycle continues. There it is. Wyshynski also tweeted this. I truly hope to be recognized by the Hall of Fame one day, not for my career in journalism, but also as a permanent counter argument to whoever defends a writer as infallible and superior because they were honored by the Hockey Hall of Fame. Oh, wow. Oh, it's like, wow. well, I mean, Wyshynski's in, so dot, dot, dot. And I think that's interesting, too. I mean, that, that's, it goes back to my point, right? But Perlini is the one that we should focus on. Yeah. And I shame. definitely, it is a shame it got lost because yeah. that was the tweet that was going viral before it was like, so I don't know what the order was. And, and I like, I watched the clip and loved it, but I was also like, okay, I need to make like, I have to retweet this because I've been really going at the Oilers hard and I did it. And people were like, isn't this great? <laughs> and five minutes later, <laughs> the Edmonton, I'm like, why is pissy trending? <laughs> the Edmonton media avails have become must must watch internet TV. Oh. Because of what happened with McDavid, like what four days ago, and now we get Drysidle, and now we get Perlini, and M McDavid had back to back. And McDavid did have back to back. <laughs> I I don't know if if it's just gonna keep up, but this is a great run by them. The media and the team out there are just making news. Yeah. Well, the next media avails. It'll be great if they lose. It'll be great if they win. Yeah, I think um, they're gonna win too. Hopefully. Uh -huh. Who are they hopefully playing? For their sake. They've. Oh my God, they're scheduled. You almost had me with such a Oilers Reddit agreeing with us oh my god i would have been like oh no they what happened no they hate us so even if we said all the things that they said i know that they're probably going to disagree with us anyway you know what okay here here's how we get ken holland fired i don't want to do that jesse where are you from <laughs> toronto adam where are you from scarborough <laughs> steve where are you from scarborough all three of us think ken holland is doing a great job hey ken Keep, Keep it up. up the great work. Keep it up. Thumbs up for Kenny. All right. Oilers He'll be fired. Guy. He'll be hey, fired. you know who's in the Hall of Fame and infallible? Ken Holland, Ken everybody. Holland. There you go. Ken and now, Holland, infallible. Hall and of now Famer. he'll be fired within two weeks. Yeah. Right, Oilers play tomorrow 
in Edmonton. I'm surprised they're still playing this game. Uh, they're playing the Panthers. So best team in the NHL versus uh, the Edmonton Oilers. This is going to be a fun one. But what so, a story if they beat them. Yeah. I hope they win. Yeah. Um, so, I work for Rogers. I do too. Hey, what is HelloFresh? With HelloFresh, you get farm fresh pre-portioned ingredients and seasonal recipes delivered right to your doorstep. You can skip steps to the grocery store and count on HelloFresh to make cooking easy, fun, and affordable. It's why it's North America's number one meal kit. Now, uh, it's a new year, and it's a great time to focus on what's important to you, whether it's saving money by ordering less takeout, learning to cook, or prioritizing your wellness, HelloFresh is here to help you with endless options to make cooking at home simple and enjoyable. HelloFresh delivers pre-portioned ingredients to your door. Like I said, farm fresh produce, and it's easy to make. I'm terrible at cooking. You can get it done in 30 minutes or less, and they actually have some quick meals that are 20 minutes or less, low prep, easy cleanup, and the fastest route to getting food on the table. It's awesome, and you should definitely check it out. So here's what I want you to do. To try it out, go to HelloFresh.com slash SDP16 and use the code SDP16 for up to 16 free meals and three free gift cards. So again, HelloFresh.com slash SDP16, use the code SDP16, up to 16 free meals and three gift cards. And of course, you want to try it. It's North America's number one meal kit, HelloFresh. I'm not going to lie to you, one of the hardest parts about being a dad is watching my daughter eat all the cereals I can no longer eat because, let's be honest, they're full of sugar and junk that you really shouldn't eat. We're all trying to eat a little bit better. It's 2022 resolution season, but a healthy breakfast doesn't have to be boring. Magic Spoon has the amazing flavors you love, but without all the bad stuff. No bad stuff. And it's amazing. As a midnight snack, right before bed, it's, it's, it, you know, it's great if you're trying to cut down on carbs, on sugar, on unhealthy food. It's good for all of that. And... Um, if you are keto, if you are gluten free, if you are grain free, if you are low carb, it's all of those things. You can build your own box. Flavors include. Are you ready for this? Cocoa, fruity frosted, peanut butter, blueberry, cinnamon, cookies and cream, and maple waffle. It's awesome. You go to magicspoon.com/stp to grab a custom bundle of cereal and try it today. And be sure to use that promo code STP at checkout to save five dollars off your order. And Magic Spoon is so confident that you're gonna like their product. It's backed by a one hundred percent happiness guarantee unlike life cereal can be matched with a happiness guarantee 100 so if you don't like it for any reason they will refund your money no questions asked. And hey because it's cereal you don't even have to send the box back how great is that remember get your next delicious bowl of guilt-free cereal magicspoon.com slash stp and use the code stp to save five bucks love you hey cheers to 2022 may hairy balls be forgot and never brought to mind with manscaped does that work? No. No, no it didn't work. All right. All right. Well, did you see the ball drop? That's Steve's. Did that? Did you like that better? I thought it was. Okay. Listen, all I'm saying is with our exclusive offer, you go to manscaped.com, use the promo code DANGLE, get it? Because it's for your balls, and you get 20% off and free shipping. I already told you about the Performance Package 4.0, where you're going to find that signature lawnmower 4.0, the electric trimmer designed to trim hair on loose skin. The advanced skin-safe technology reduces cuts and nicks on your delicate areas. It also comes equipped with a 4,000K LED light. That's a lot of TVs. Uh, and that will make sure that you reach the promised land and not other things. And you don't want to cut the wrong things down there. You know what I'm saying? So here's the deal. For the new year, let's keep those balls shiny and clean with Manscaped. Be sure to travel to manscaped.com for our exclusive offer. 20% off and free shipping with the code DANGLE. And cheers to your balls in 2022. This podcast is sponsored by BetterHelp Online Therapy. Check out betterhelp.com slash SDP. The best way to think about therapy um, basically is, is I would say, uh, working out, but for your brain. And for your body to function, your brain's got to be in shape. That's why I go to therapy, and that's why you should check out BetterHelp, because here's the thing. You can do the in-person thing. You can do it over the phone. You can even do it over chat. It's completely up to you. It's whatever you're comfortable with, and you can start communicating with your therapist in under 48 hours. You invest in stocks. You invest in your body. Why are you not investing in your mind as well? This podcast is sponsored by BetterHelp, and if you go to betterhelp.com slash SDP, you'll get 10% off your first month at BetterHelp. So betterhelp.com slash SDP to get 10% off your first month, and good mental health to you. So uh, uh, Montreal has finally announced the general manager, Kent Hughes, yes, former agent of Patrice Bergeron. 
Because mm-hmm. I guess he can't be Patrice Bergeron's agent and be a GM of an NHL team. No. Which also gave rise to a bunch of um, uh, ridiculous, um, and, and I mean this, ridiculous uh, but conspira- fun. fun conspiracy theories that Patrice Bergeron would ha- somehow sign in Montreal this summer when he's a free agent and finish his career in Montreal because he grew up and was a fan of the Canadians, but not a chance in hell. It sucked because I did for a very brief moment allow myself to believe and Elliot Freeman on 32 Thoughts Today said, no, He's Patrice a Bruin Bergeron for life. will be a Bruin for life. I mean, I, I say it every now and then. I'll say it again. Like, it's not just that the Bruins have been good for this long. It's that all the players have stayed. And they don't want to go anywhere else. Like, what a culture they've built. Yeah. Marchand, Bergeron. Yeah. Past is still young. Noted, um, noted Leaf fan Brad Marchand. Mm-hmm. Noted Leaf fan Brad Marchand. And Tuka Rask, he doesn't want to go anywhere else. He'd rather retire. Like, what a testament to what they've done. 100%. And, uh, God, I hate it. Uh, but, you know, Ken Hughes, it's hard to know because, you know, obviously, we know Jeff Gorton did a pretty good job in rebuilding the Rangers. There were some some serious hiccups along the way, as we know from last year. Mm-hmm. Um, but I think we chalked some of that up to the Rangers' ownership being erratic at times. James Dolan. Yeah. who's You know, he's, his interest is more with the Knicks, but there's some crazy stuff that and happens with band. the Knicks. Yeah, and his band. He loves his band. And good for him. Whatever. He's a billionaire. He can have a band. Um, but I, don't I know. yeah, let him have a band. <laughs> not when he let should have a band. Not, you you can't be going on tour with your dad band so when he, you should be running a billion <laughs> so dollar company. If Shaq, who probably could buy an NBA team, if Shaq bought an NBA team and put out a mixtape, would you have a problem with that? Uh, Shaq no. was part owner of the Sacramento Kings until like two weeks ago. Oh, uh, because he has a new uh, venture that's going to probably in sports gambling that he can't, he can't also own a team. So he did own a team. <laughs> Nelly, he was just... Nelly owned part of the uh, New Orleans team, didn't he? No. Who did he own? Pelicans? Charlotte. Oh. Charlotte. He owned Charlotte. Did he? I don't yeah, know. Yeah, Nelly was a big, big like owner in Charlotte and he was putting out music. Yeah. The, the, uh, wrong with Shaq, that? Shaq was also part owner of the uh, Sacramento Kings when he played for the Lakers. Hey, come on. Hey. hey, come on. Peja was hey. yeah, 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 yeah. Peja was um, sick. The Miami Dolphins, since we're down on this track, the Miami Dolphins did something fun a couple uh, years ago where they gave out small portions of their franchise to celebrities. So J-Lo was what? a part owner of the Dolphins. J-Lo and A-Raw. <laughs> Because you could buy, like, I don't know what the investment is, but you could buy a portion of it. Like in a Kinder Surprise? Yeah. Like Charlie and the Chocolate Factory? What the hell is that? J-Lo and A-Rod get to own the Dolphins. You know, (laughs) here's what I want to do. I want to rebuild the Montreal Canadiens using just Kent Hughes clients. (laughs) Can we do it? Oh, uh, let me see. I've got the... I got it. Oh, you got it? Okay, bring it. Okay. What do we got? So our top pair... Is Darnell Nurse. Okay. And Chris Letang. All right. I like it. This is a good top Do you pair. get to keep guys currently on the team? E- mm, ooh, yes. <laughs> okay. And you also don't have to be cap compliant. Fuck it. Oh, well. Nope. Okay. Mm-mm. All right. So this is just you listing people he represents. Yeah. So, okay. I'll just. <laughs> so, yes. <laughs> I'll just do the top line. This isn't anything. Nurse and Latang. Okay, here's the top 50 Kent Hughes clients. Just list them. L- listed by that. Okay, fine. <laughs> Highest paid top five. Chris Latang, Patrice Bergeron, Darnell Nurse, Drake Matheson, and Mike Matheson, and Adam and Jesse. Go fuck yourself. <laughs> well, I'm glad he's got a lock on the, on the Thussens yeah. in the NHL. I don't know. I thought it was neat. The, everyone was talking about... Oh, he's got these clients. I wonder if they'll sign with the Habs. Some of them were ridiculous. Mm-hmm. Some might not be, but fuck me, I guess. I no, mean, because it wasn't a real exercise. Like, you well, didn't actually <laughs> take the guy. Because I got two into, words into it into, <laughs> before getting <laughs> <they're> like, <laughs> kicked in the shins. Because you, you didn't do any work beforehand. You just pulled up the list, and you didn't really look at the Montreal Canadiens <laughs> roster give me, give me, and fit I, them into the lineup. You changed the rules of the thing I created you a second ago. You spot. I'm asking you to come to this with some forethought. Maybe you have the Montreal Canadiens oh, roster. Sorry. You have it's cap. You just what oh. should I have done as a general it's manager? Also, <laughs> it's also Jesse. Not, it's also not cap compliant. I'm just gonna list the guys and they're on the team. Because it's funny. What? Because it's funny. <laughs> what else Why are you, you getting so pissy? <laughs> who else does so he pissy? represent? Tell me. You read it. <laughs> tell me who he represents. Who does? No, no. I do want to know beyond yeah. the top five no, who he represents. Great. Please tell me. Okay. Latang, I, I Bergeron, know. Nurse, Batherson, Matheson, uh-huh. Colin White, Anthony Beauvillier, which is really interesting because French name, Anton Hudobin, Marco Scandella, who I think was a one-time hab already, 
Zemgus Gergensen's noted Latvian legend, Sammy Blay, William Cachier, Nick Paul, Nathan Beaulieu, and I think we can stop listing them after that. Huh. I don't know. I would not be surprised if one of those guys ended up Ahab. By the I'm sure it'll happen. Time next season. Don't you think like don't you think as a like look at how well it's worked out in Tampa, right? Julian Breezewa was an agent, was he not? Mm, I don't know. I, I don't thought know Julian Breezewa was. was an agent. I'm going to look that up. I'm pretty sure. And here's the thing. Um, you know, you've got to you've got to find strengths where you can get them right now, right? Well, everyone has their guys. Yeah. Dubas yeah. has his guys. Every GM has their guys. No matter how insignificant. John Ferguson Jr. Johnny Pole, that's my friggin' guy. Um, Julian Brisebois, uh was employed by Keenan Blakey Law uh, before joining the Canadians. Uh, during that time, he worked in sports law where he represented several NHL and Major League Baseball players, or, sorry, clubs and arbitration cases, as well as an acting advisor in contract negotiations. So not an agent. Doesn't look like it. No. I badly want NHL GM Alan Walsh. He's <laughs> <laughs> next. Man. He has to keep doing the show. <laughs> he does. He I'd does. like to know what he knows about Kent Hughes and if he's willing to talk about that. Well, we do have a show. Yeah, I don't know. We do have Maybe a show. Maybe if somebody here who's his co-host could ask him a oh, question. I should mention, I should mention, now that we have, now that we are talking about that, mm -hmm. we have an enormous guest coming on uh, uh, Agent Provocateur recording right after this. Size or stature? Uh, stature. Oh, wow. Yeah. Both. Oh, is he... Is the person he's, tall? He's pretty. Is he a big person? Yeah. He, here, let me see. Yeah, yeah. Let me see. You bring it up on the screen. And I'll tell the audience if it's cool. I'll tell the audience if it's someone. You know what's great? He's typing in the name right now, and I'm blind, so I can't see it. Oh, is he big? He must be. How much is that in? Uh, oh, don't, feet? don't. That'll give it away. Two feet. That'll give it away. Oh, okay, six, six, one in a bit. No, you gave it away. <laughs> I think you yeah. gave it away. <laughs> I gave it away. I think he gave it away. I also should mention, um, we have another, we have a, 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 I should have started the show with this, but pissy <laughs> was too hard to mess up. Um, uh, we have, we have another announcement coming. And On Monday. Monday. Yeah. So um, we are expanding the network. We have another show coming to the SDPN and we are very excited about this one. I don't know. Give us a clue. Give us three clues. We can't give you any clues. Who is it? <laughs> Tell us. <laughs> no clues. Tell us now. <laughs> there won't be any clues. I was teasing the Discord this morning. Really? What were yeah. you saying? Oh, uh, I was just like, we have an announcement coming, and then poof, I disappeared. <laughs> <laughs> I just pulled my cape like tuxedo mask, and I just freaking yeah. disappeared. We're expecting it Monday between like 5 and 6 p.m. And Press this, release. Yeah, there will be a press release, and this is a big one. This is a big, big, big thing that, that uh, honestly, in my wildest dreams, I didn't know that we'd be able to pull something like this off, but it's kind of cool that we do. And uh, obviously in conjunction with Monday show, you're going to hear about the announcement right off the top of the show. So even if you missed the press release on, on Twitter or whatever, or on Instagram, you will know. Uh, I'm going to spoil show. it. You're not going to spoil it. I'm going to spoil it right now. I'm going to say it and then I'm going to post the show. We took the NHL rights from Rogers. They sold it to us. Jesse. Yeah. Oh my God! Why did you say that? Now it's in the show, Jesse. and everybody knows. Don't tell anybody though. We're it's coming out on Monday. So, but here's the thing: yeah. our panel show is just Andrew Berkshire. <laughs> That'd be funny. And his be, kids. And his kids. <laughs> and he's only allowed to do the games where a team's losing by a lot. And he has to do every <laughs> single game. Every game. Twenty four seven. Every game. Live Andrew Berkshire. Every, live. It's just Andrew. <laughs> Andrew. Now, TV. All I want in the world <laughs> is a visual of. Berkshire, Dylan, Miles, the Squirtle stuffy that I bought him. <laughs> On the hockey night in Canada uh, table. That's and when Andrew can't do it, Julian will occasionally yeah. fill in. It's from his kitchen. That's great. Oh, I can't wait. Uh, we also have some stuff coming for the Olympics, by the way. Um, although we won't brand it that because they'll get mad at us. But the it's, games are coming, so we have ways to cover it. Five ring tournament. <laughs> or whatever. Um, so anyway, long story short, big announcement. Monday, very, very, very excited also, about uh, it. Also, let's welcome uh, Nick and Jamie to the network. We have two uh, new team members. Nick's going to be producing the CJ show, and mm -hmm. Jamie's our new social media coordinator. Yeah. Well, welcome them to the show. Very excited to have them on. So, like, here's the thing. So, Nick, uh, Nick and Jamie have in interesting stories as well, and I think it goes to how we are sort of conducting business here. So, how do you know Jamie? 
How do I know Jamie? How do you know Jamie? Through, uh, How did we find out about her? Uh, through our community manager, Robert, and then through that, through our Discord, because she's uh, she started out as a mod there. That's right. Yes. So our mods work, they, they work in shifts, and they monitor that Discord 24-7, 365. Unbelievable. It's, it's just an unbelievable amount of... And, 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 and they and, just kind of did that. Like, yeah, they themselves. just decided that they wanted to do. And so, We're you know, like, Great. What, what we've done <laughs> thus far... Um, uh, is is bringing people and and put them in a position. And again, you have to be you have to understand that this is a very small business right now, right? It's not like these are full time jobs. There's no benefits right now. These are people just believing oh, in something. Adam, you're so bashful. We're rich. <laughs> yeah, I have dental. So <laughs> yeah, you do. Oh, you, do? Uh, you, you must guys, be paying for it yourself. You then. guys didn't know this, but out of my own pocket. Oh, yeah. still, still bought dental. His, bought his own dental with his debit card. <laughs> I got my Ooh. wife's dental. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, because you got that government benefit yeah. thing. This one's on SL. But the, you know, the thing is, it's really special when we meet somebody like that because we think they're great and we want them to to succeed, and so we put them in a position. Robert's the same. Mm-hmm. Um. And uh, and and then of course Nick has done some work with Sportsnet. Mm-hmm. What else has Nick done? No, no, no. Sportsnet pff, bar down. Oh, is he Nick down Andrade? That? Oh, you might right. remember from Bar Down. Oh, I yeah, only know yeah, him yeah. from Watch a Leafs game with Steve Dangle Boo. as he uh, worked with us on this past weekend stream Boo. with Sid Sixero, friend of the show. How dare you boo friend of the show? Boo. Hey, no, not not boo. <laughs> Nick Andrade, Watch a Leafs game with Steve Dangle. He's Nick Andrade. He's click also like, a click subscribe. Tell all your he's friends. also an uh, he's an up and coming producer. And the thing yeah. is, with uh, cut bats in media, there aren't a lot of producers left. Like they're really like on the TV side, there is, but people who can do audio and video, pretty rare. Jesse's one of them. Um, and he quit. And uh, yeah, what? <laughs> hey, I work here. Yeah, he, fuck you talking about. You quit to work here. Uh, so, in conjunction. So kind of, I don't know. So the thing is, you know, <laughs> I, I we're very happy for Nick. You said his Jamie. phone to quit. <laughs> Sorry. Drop him a line to say hi. Let Adam talk. No. <laughs> oh, is that is that cumbersome? When people cut off your bits. Anyway. Ah, uh, the here's some more. Kent we didn't clients. talk about Kent. No, here's <laughs> at all. Nope, there's some more. Uh, um, a big deal. He's not technically bilingual. He can speak both language, but he's not francophone. I should say is the is the big deal. Nick? Yeah. Uh, Nick. Kent Hughes. Oh, yeah. That, <laughs> I was yeah. like, I didn't know that. He's not francophone, but he is bilingual. That's and, what I was trying to say. And you know, what I think so. First off, it's great that he's bilingual, mm-hmm. but I also think it's important. Like, I I actually hope that this this management structure the way it goes i hope that this turns the team around a because we launched a game over in montreal first and it's been uh, andrew i just feel bad for all the time but secondly you know you want the nhl's one of the its most storied franchise to be successful and yes. it would be great to see that happen and them come out of this and i really believe that in two or three seasons it's a different conversation about the montreal Canadiens. you know what berkshire uh, doing game over the season reminds me of you know the Simpsons House of Horror episode where oh. Bart won't let Krusty sleep? <laughs> hey, kids, we're back for our 60th consecutive hour of the Krusty the Cloud show. <laughs> yes. He yes. won't let me stop. <laughs> That's 100% it. That's him right now. Um, I want to quickly mention that the, uh, the NHL and NHLPA have made it official. They will stop testing asymptomatic players or close contact fully vaccinated players and staff. After the All-Star break, with the exception of cross-border protocols, obviously Canada has different rules than the United States. Um, so, I mean, that's a big deal. All the other major sports leagues, I believe, are like that now. Um, but the NHL moving to that, you know, being a significant part of the NHL being in Canada is, is, a, is a major step. And hopefully indicative of where we're at with COVID. Although, obviously, you know, there's going to be people that disagree with that one way or another. Just think I want to bring it up. I don't know. I think we're going to get some news this week from about the Ontario government. I think so. Oh, about lifting restrictions. Yeah, yeah, tomorrow. Yeah. We're getting it tomorrow. Oh, well, um, that's this week. Yeah, they, I think Doug Ford was on a radio station in Ottawa a couple of days ago and said, I hate these restrictions. I'm, yeah. You know, we've got good news coming at the end of the week. Was Along he holding with, his tiny shovel? Along with that NHL news, uh, this week they're supposed to announce the Olympic schedule. So all the hey. teams have their schedules, like they know it in private, but publicly we'll find out hopefully by the end of the week, all what the games are going to look like. And uh, Elliot Friedman was uh, saying that he expects some teams, because the All-Star game is happening on Saturday in Vegas, he expects some teams who have a lot of games to make up to play that Monday. 
Ooh. So there, there could be some instances where uh, you're coming off two days from the All Star or one day from the All Star game, and you're playing on Monday. Ah, great. A lot so, of teams we'll are. See. There's going to be nothing's going to be ideal. No, it won't be ideal. Yep. Um. Uh, also, uh, Elliot Friedman explained it really well in 31, uh, 32 thoughts. But um, on Tuesday, the Premier Hockey Federation announced. Uh, a commitment of over $25 million over the next three years. That means the salary cap goes from 300000 to seven hundred fifty grand, and adding two teams, one in Montreal, and the other one's going to be an American city that's not announced yet. Um, and this is interesting. Um, he said, at the end of the Olympic cycle, some players are expected to consider front office jobs with several NHL teams, while others will look to extend their hockey playing careers. The Premier Hockey League's... Uh, Pre- sorry, Premier Hockey Federation was widely celebrated on social media. Uh, and to make the, the target audi- make sure the target audience was reached, several non PHF players received direct messages with the news. The reaction was the 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 reaction was mixed to that, to say the least. I did see some confusion there. So yeah. So no, no. But so uh, from what I'm getting, mm. a they didn't they didn't tell their own players union. It came as a surprise to the players of the PHF. The other thing that I'm getting from that last sentence. Is that people in the not PHF PWHPA? Yeah. Oh, received dre- direct messages with the news on purpose. Oh, people were DMing. That's DMing what I'm getting. Be like, Look, several non PHF players received direct messages with the news. There was mixed reaction to that, to say the least. Oh gosh, oh, that's not great. Oh, I misunderstood the first that, time you said that. Uh, this is I'm only reading from Elliot. I uh, do not know anything beyond that. No, it sounds like they're poking the other side. I don't know. I think increasingly. Both would not like to be looked at as both sides, once like two sides of a coin. Yeah, I think both sides have have made it clear that they don't want to do that. Doing what doing the DM thing, if that's true. Well, if and that's again, true, yeah. again, this is something that should be celebrated. Sure, you know what I mean. Should. Absolutely, and, you know, it's a huge you, step. You see your typical neck beards, like, well, they're still not making shit. Well, no, but they're making more. Mm-hmm. That the whole announcement was they're making more, and more is better. In progression to even better than that. Don't have to shit on everything. It seems like, this, to borrow a, a phrase from Steve, there was a little stank on it. Seem you that know, way. If you're, if you're DMing people. And the problem with the, the women's hockey game right now and the issue is, is that everybody's not together in one league. Mm-hmm. You have the, some of the best stars in the game, and it's split. It's mm-hmm. split down, I don't know, whatever way you want to categorize the stars, but it's, they're not all in one league, and that's a problem. You know, And yeah. hopefully one day we get a situation that they're all playing in, in the one league on different teams, and it's fun competition to Something watch. Something tells me this is going to resolve soon. Yeah. yeah. It's yeah. got to. I want to see, like, see members of the PWHPA who are amazing athletes go up against other amazing athletes, like <laughs> Michaela Grammentis from the Toronto Six. Who scored a hat trick the other day yeah. and is extremely good. Right. I want and again, to see that stuff. I, and I would encourage, and, and we've heard this from reporters, we've heard this from players, I would encourage you not to look at it as they're divided anymore. I think they're two groups doing their own thing. They're figuring it out. Like, this, I don't really know how much ego is involved anymore. I think a lot of it is financial and mm-hmm. yeah. philosophical. But it, imagine we're looking at the men's game and Matthews and McDavid are in different leagues. That would suck. Yeah. Ooh. That would really suck, and that's what we have with the women's game. And I look at it, and I'm like, ah, wish they could all just play together. I have a good feeling. I feel like this is going to end. You know, Are you choosing trust. optimism? I'm tomorrow? choosing. I choose optimism. Mm. Optimism for sure. Now, uh, lastly, uh, really o- Willie O'Ree's ceremony in Boston last night was great. It's a bummer that he couldn't be there, but I, I do want to give a shout-out to a uh, fellow member of the media, the pissy media, um, uh, Dave Amber, who did a great, uh, a great piece on him going back to New Brunswick, and I saw that this morning, too, and I was like, man, Dave Amber deserves a huge uh, a huge credit for that. Willie O'Ree, um, you know, him getting into the uh, the Hall of Fame, and this whole celebration has been delayed because of COVID, but it's just such a cool thing to see, and it was great to see Boston react the way that they did. Um, and, yeah, I gotta be honest with you, I, I was... When he wasn't in the Hall of Fame, and I found that out, I was shocked that he wasn't. Yeah, the hockey world was a little late to giving Willie O'Ree his due, but it's, you know, better late than never. And it's good to see him getting the recognition he deserves. And on the note of Dave Amber, like really underrated energy guy. 
Dave Amber? Oh my God! You you can't be tired around him. No, you can't. He's it's it's infectious, and everyone loves him. Everyone loves like giving him shit, and, he's the, and he's, he takes it with great humor. He's the kind of person that you know when people talk behind his back, they compliment him. Yeah, you know. Yes, that's yes. Uh, and I don't know David Amber very well, but everything I've heard about him has been behind his back and great. Great guy. <laughs> so, great guy. Uh, let's get to the press conference. We just want to shout out Edmonds. Thank you, Edmonds, for sponsoring our show. Now, if you haven't heard of Edmonds, it's car buying. If you are looking to get a new car in 2022 or a used car, really doesn't matter. Car shopping is already kind of confusing and a bit of a stressful process. You're talking about a multi-year commitment. It's like, you know, signing a contract with an NHL team. How long am I going to be with this car? Is it going to be any good? Is this is this contract that I'm signing any good? Finding the right car is trickier now more than ever because of inventory shortages too. Edmonds goes the extra mile to make car buying easier by providing you, a shopper, with honest car reviews, video test drives, online shopping tools, and the latest consumer advice. Now, you might want to check out the Edmonds long-term road test. And with the car shortage, obviously, some models are harder to find, may be more expensive than usual. Edmonds obviously helps you out with this. Over 50 years of trusted car shopping advice and price guidance all in one place. Edmonds unbiased research, reviews, and industry expertise help empower you, the car shopper, to make the best decisions. Now, you know me. I'm a car guy. I love my cars. I got a pickup truck and I got a convertible I'm very, very proud of. Edmonds is the place to go. You got to check it out. It's going to give you everything you need to know. Car shopping can be overwhelming. Edmonds is here to help. Visit Edmonds.com and click on Edmonds Best Car Rankings to Research and Compare Vehicles. That's Edmonds, E-D-M-U-N-D-S.com. Edmonds, we drive it like it is. This podcast is sponsored by BetterHelp Online Therapy. Check out BetterHelp.com slash STP. The best way to think about therapy, um, basically, is, is I would say, uh, working out, but for your brain. And for your body to function, your brain's got to be in shape. That's why I go to therapy, and that's why you should check out BetterHelp, because here's the thing. You can do the in-person thing. You can do it over the phone. You can even do it over chat. It's completely up to you. It's whatever you're comfortable with, and you can start communicating with your therapist in under 48 hours. You invest in stocks. You invest in your body. Why are you not investing in your mind as well? This podcast is sponsored by BetterHelp, and if you go to betterhelp.com slash SDP, you'll get 10% off your first month at BetterHelp. So betterhelp.com slash SDP to get 10% off your first month, and good mental health to you. The Presser SDP. The Steve Dangle Press Conference. And really fun to watch hockey with. Yeah? Yeah, he doesn't watch hockey sitting. Hmm. He can't. Hmm. This question comes from Court Bain Bridge on our Discord. <clears throat> the Penguins roster might be fully healthy for their Thursday game against Ottawa. Well, you jinxed it. Thanks. As Thanks a for that. Penguins fan, should I be excited or terrified? Terrified. That's exactly what <laughs> almost happened to the Leafs <laughs> like a couple days ago. And now people are hurt and in protocol. Be terrified. Always be afraid. Be very afraid. Optimism is for fools. But no, seriously, I hope they're fully healthy because holy shit, what a wagon of a team right now. This is from OJ Concentrate, and then I'll read a follow-up <laughs> from Colin D. <laughs> like what comes first? Steve streams Red Dead or Ontario removes all restrictions? Colin said, uh, starting to think that Steve will vote for Doug Ford before he streams Red Dead. And we all know how Steve feels about Ooh. Dofo. Dofo. <laughs> hey, Adam, this question is for you. Steve, stay out of this. Oh, oh no. Doug Ford re wins the next election before Steve, uh, before Steve streams Red Dead. That's what's going to happen. He's going to take his little shovel and he's going to shovel the snow between his legs. Folks! <laughs> folks! 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 But yeah, it's going to happen. That's what's going to happen. Steve, Steve is going to talk about streaming Red Dead like you talked about asking out the hot person in your class in high school. <laughs> You're going to talk about it for four years and then it's just never going to happen. And then it's going to become irrelevant because you go to different schools. Yeah. <laughs> that was Damn. a good one. Damn. <laughs> I don't know what the he hesitation is. I really don't. I don't know why you haven't done it yet. Time. What are you even doing these days? Stuff. Raising a toddler. Oh, you know what? You, here's my problem as a parent is I have all these plans for what I'm going to do with my night time. 
what I'm going to do with the babies in bed time. Mm. And then the babies in bed and I want to sit and do nothing. You're tired. And I'm a little tired. Yeah. Yeah. And also it's Red Dead. Like I still play Red Dead, but I wouldn't be just playing Red Dead. I'd be hosting a stream. You know what I mean? It's different. Yeah. Can't burp and fart the way I want. You know? Can't you? Nah. You could. You literally could. I suppose you could. There's no smell o meter on the uh, on the Twitch stream. I was playing NHL <laughs> with uh like some just random fans. Yeah. And uh I thought I didn't think the microphone would pick up my fart. <laughs> and, and there was a uh, like it was a relatively young fan I was playing with and it was just did Steve Dangle fart? And oh, I was like no. no, I don't know what that was. And you did. He's, and then he goes, you did. <laughs> <laughs> Good for him. And and for him. He was right. Yeah. Next question is a fun little experiment. I'm going to knock it down a couple pegs, but I think we should do it. Okay. Rodarn says, if you were to place the roster of the entire NHL in one massive draft, who would the 32 players drafted in the first round be? So I'm going to oh. knock that down and not say 32. I'm going to say, let's do the top 10. If you were doing a draft and starting in order, yeah, let's do, try and do it in order. Because like, there's the are you trying to build for the future team? Are you trying to win now? Do you just go for the stars? Oh, are you this? Are you the Coyotes and want to win never? Right. Um, so <laughs> make sure tra- trade down. McDavid is number one. All right, let's put McDavid at one. Number two, no, I think uh, Willie Nylander. I think Sidney Crosby goes number two. No, I I'd take Austin Matthews number two. You take no. So yeah. here's okay. Here's why I said Sidney. Because NHL play, uh, NHL GMs are always defer to the older guy. Leon should probably go second or Nathan McKinnon. No, I'm still taking Matthews. You say Matthews? Yeah. I'm going to say Sid. I take Sid first. Oh. And what? Who do you take second? Connor. Yeah. Okay. My third is going to be Austin. I, I I didn't know I was drafting. Is this my me drafting my own team? We could do that. We could do it. Like this. is that how we're we doing can, this? we could do it? Each of us. There's three teams in this league, and each of us have a draft pick. Yeah. So are we doing ten? Let's do that. Okay. Let's go. Let's go. What's uh? What's a good multiple of three that we can? Have? We'll do the top fifteen. So wait, okay, okay, okay. We got that's a lot. We we got a top so, twelve. But if I pick it's a guy, you can't top pick top. that guy. No, because it needs to be a multiple. Of three. Uh... So, top twelve. Yeah, yeah. So that's what I'm saying. Like we're going, we're doing our draft right now. There's three teams in this league. Oh. Everybody's in the pool. Top fifty. Okay. How, how do we pick who goes first? Uh, Steve, do you want to go first? No, get a randomizer. We got to do this properly. <laughs> oh we're doing this properly. I don't right, give right, a right. shit. Right, no, right, we're right, doing right. this properly. All right, all right. How long is it gonna take? All right, it'll. We have. We're only like an hour in. We're gonna do a, a coin flip. I'm gonna. So Adam and Steve, you're flipping for. Um, uh, something. No, we'll do like. Uh, what do you want to do? Adam and I'll flip, and then you and I'll flip, mm-hmm. and then you and Adam flip. Yes, and we'll figure something out. Whoever wins, it, uh, hopefully, it's not a three-way tie. All okay. right, heads or tails, Steve. Heads. What do we got? So we got, we got uh tails. Yay. So Adams won one battle. Uh, Steve and I here all pick uh tails. I'm, I'm flipping. Flipping. Oh, Tails again. So I've won victory. See, you're in third place. You have two third. losses. I'm in third. So this is the, the flip for the first pick. Adam, you haven't picked yet. Heads or tails? Tails. All right. Flipping again. The Google flip thing's really good. Tails. Adam gets the one. I'm two. Steve is three. Adam, you are on the clock. First overall pick. Who are you selecting? Am I three and four? Is yes, it snake? It's, it's it's snake draft. Oh, okay, okay. Yeah, yeah, Ew, yeah. I hate the snake draft. It's lame. It's the, best, it's the best way. Connor McDavid. Uh, I'm two. I have Austin. Here, let me make the list as well so we know the teams. This is great. I'm going to build a shitty team like in fantasy again. McDavid. So we're doing a dozen? Jesse. I have Matthew. Yeah, we're going to do 12. Uh, Steve. I'm at number two overall. Uh, Jesse Blake selects Austin Matthews. Steven, you are on the clock. Sidney Crosby. Crosby. Steve, you are on the clock again. Mm-hmm. Alexander Ovechkin. Oh, because it's funny. Oh, <laughs> that's who was to get, that was going to be my next Oh, really? Because yeah. <laughs> I have McDavid. I've got the ultimate playmaker. Uh, oh, at number, what are we at? Five. Five. Jesse selects Leon Dreisaitl. Fuck. Oh. All Adam, right. you're on the board at six. Nathan McKinnon. Adam Wilde selects Nathan McKinnon with pick number six. 
Steven? No, no, no. I picked next. Oh, picked Adam, next. sorry. Yeah, you're back next. on the board. I picked next. Uh, I'm going to take Kale McCarr. Oh, that's a good oh. pick. Uh, I am going to select Andre Vasilevsky. Oh! Oh! Darn. Tootin. Uh, Steven? I select Victor Hedman. Oh, that's a good pick. I know. You're on the board again. Um. Oh, God. It's so hard to do off the top of your head. Yeah. It's so hard to do off the top of your head. Who are the best players? Um, <laughs> Artemi Panarin. Oh, that's a good pick. Oh, I like oh, that. Oh, my God. No. I'm so pissed. Uh, I know who I should have picked. I am I'm going to select idiot. Adam Fox. Oh, man. Woo! Adam Wilde, you are on the board for Woo! the next two picks. Well, I need a goalie. I need a goalie. The funny thing is, Vasilevsky to me is the only one that is like truly been, truly been like the most consistent in the last five years of any goalie. He's the best current goalie, easily. But here's the second. Here's the question: Who's the second best current goalie? Because this year, because Freddie Anderson was terrible last year, but he's amazing this year. It's a Jack Campbell was has been great for two or three years now. To to me, it's got to be Igor Shosturkin. Oh, he's good. He's in that, you know, age part of the discussion. Yeah. For the future, for now. Age before beauty. Dude, my team is sh- fucked for the future. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I don't You're care. a win, win now mode, baby. <laughs> oh, yeah. Hell yeah. Uh, so I'm going to go with Shosturkin. Oh, okay. And I oh. need another defenseman because Fox is gone and I fucking love Adam I'm Fox. I'm so anxious about him. It's such a joy oh, to gosh. watch him play. I'm crying. Okay. So Hedman and Fox are gone, right? Mm-hmm. Yes. Yeah. Come on, Adam. You got you to gotta give me a minute. Come on. Oh, okay, that's fair enough. It's yeah, yeah. really hard off the top of your head. If you had a list in front of you, you could do it no problem. Yeah. Off the top of your head, you're going to forget someone oh, I know. really I, obvious. And someone's going to be like, you're an idiot. <laughs> yeah. um, no, and for everyone screaming right now, no, don't worry. They're my next pick, but I hope I get there. Oh my who are you God. taking next, Steve? Ah, uh, fuck you. That's who I'm taking <laughs> next. Ah. <laughs> uh, and it's one of my two picks away. That's so many picks. That's it's great. a lot of picks. Oh, my God. Adam is on the clock. Jacob Slavin. Oh, oh, that's off the board. Off the board, but shrewd. Slavin? Makar Slavin with McKinnon, ew, McDavid, ew. and fucking, uh, who else do I have? Oh, my God. We yeah. like Adam, your team so far is McDavid, McKinnon, Makar, Shesterkin, and Slavin. God damn. I am going with. Miko Rantanen. Ooh, interesting. Ugh. I say we go to six picks so that way we can round out a full line. Sure. Ooh, Let's do that. Okay. <laughs> now you're enjoying it. Uh, uh, Steve? Oh. Pick. Well, if we're doing six picks so we can do one line, then my next pick isn't going to make sense. It doesn't matter. Okay, good. So Nikita Kucherov. Oh, I thought Kucherov was already picked. Was he? No. Nope. Oh, Fuck see, as soon, ah! as soon as I said Panarin, I'm like, you fucking moron. You didn't even get the best Russian available. Kucherov. Oh, shit. I don't know who I would have picked other than who I picked, though. Like, Kucherov's amazing, but I also feel like I'm confident. We can do two lines. No, I'm, that's too I'm far. I'm fine to keep going. No, fuck it. <laughs> Steve, you're on the board again. Uh Oh, God, I need another defenseman. Uh, who, who even is my defenseman? Hedman. Um. Uh, uh, fuck a defenseman. Braden Point. <laughs> oh, Damn it! That was that's my next a... pick. Uh, my next pick, because you took my pick, uh, I'm going to take a Prize off. Oh, that's a really good pick! <laughs> Fucking good Who's pick. having uh, an outstanding so year after Senior. a slow start. He's picked it up and Kirill's back. So good. Okay. Uh, Adam, you're on the board twice. Yeah, I really... Am I on the board twice? Yeah, if we're, if we're going to keep going. It's your turn. The snake. Cause we're, cause we're, we're Unless this six? is the last pick. This is the last pick. Oh, okay, we'll we'll stop there though. Uh, three, four, five. Yeah, you got McDavid, McKinnon, McCarr, Shesterkin, and Slavin. So you need one more. Last Listen, pick. I'm, I wish I'm, I had a list in front of me. And also, scoot over. You're off camera. Oh, sorry. So <laughs> TJ got, Brody. So like, if I didn't have, if I didn't have good playmakers, McKinnon and uh, uh, McKinnon and McDavid are great playmakers on forward. So that's why I'm not gonna pick Mitch Marner. Alex Biega. Oh, right. Because Mitch, Mitch is another great playmaker. I need somebody who can fucking bury the biscuit. Which wing are you looking for? 
I don't know if it matters on this particular case because these guys are so talented. Well, it doesn't matter for me. We so, already know that. Yeah. What's, <laughs> the, Steve, what's the average age of your team? It's pretty up old. There. Uh, 34? <laughs> it's it's kind of old. So who do we have in NHL scoring that led last year? Obviously, Matthews. Do I have a goalie? Ovechkin. No. <laughs> who, who, who scored the third most amount of goals in the NHL last year? Is it Leon? And I think it was pick. a one, two, three of Matthews, Leon, Ovechkin, but you want me to run another down guy might have been in there. TSN's list of the top fifty players in the NHL. I wanted I based wanted, on what? Based <laughs> on what? <laughs> Shitty list. Based on what? <laughs> TSN's list of the top fifty players in the NHL uh, for twenty twenty one. McDavid, McKinnon, Matthews, Kucherov, Drysidel, Vasilevsky, Hedman, Panarin, Crosby. Barkov, oh, Marshand, really good player. Yep. Makar, Point, Patrick Kane, Pasternak, Marner, Ovi, Huberto, Ranton, Shifley. That's the top 20. How many defensemen were in there, too? Uh, lefty, Victor Hedman, and right Makar? D, Kale Makar. That's, That's it. it. Yeah. Okay. So, Adam, who you got? Your so, last... I don't know if I'm insane here or not. You are. But... This player has been in the top five in goal scoring now for two straight years. He's, they're, they're, he's in the top five right now. And he's a guy that you would never expect. I think I know who you're going to say. Who do you think it's going to be? Mika Zibanejad. Top uh, five goal whoa. scoring last year. It could be Mika Zibanejad. I think it might be Alex Dabrinkat. Alex Dabrinkat. Yeah. Oh, I think I'm going to take... I need some... Yo, he's got 23 goals. He's, he had 32 nah. in like 50 games last year. And nine assists, I think, this year. Yeah, I... Yeah. I need somebody who can bury it, and I know I like you. Look at my team. What else do you need? You got McDavid, McKinnon, yeah, McCarr. Yeah, you need a you need somebody who can just pot goals. I don't care if this guy ever gets an assist. I'm for sure going to bring Cat. I would have taken uh, Marshand or Pasta. Here, you want to go two more Pasta rounds? Would have been good. Yeah. You want to go two more rounds so that I can actually have a line and. We have spares. No, no. You no, had this to, is you, good. You this are. Is good. You didn't GM correctly. Yeah. You had six oh, picks. Fuck yeah. <laughs> I want to trade. I want to make a trade. <laughs> so, yo, Jesse. We okay. I want. You had six picks and you didn't pick a goalie. I want everybody's picks. I want every. I want to see. I also want to throw these up and be like, okay. like, can we do that? Like a graphic, like a snake draft graphic, sure, and throw sure. it up on our on our SDPN sports yeah, page and see what people think. To bring that. We got to talk more about Alex DeBrincat. No, man. he's very disrespected in this league. I want to know how good Braden Point is at skating backwards. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> you could just play a power play setup the whole time, right? Like somebody who's just po running point. It's a despicable team. Like it's stupid. Kucherov, Point, Pinar, and Crosby Ovechkin. I'm upset you took Two Kucherov. of those guys stand still. Who the, took the Kucherov pick shouldn't have happened. I he know. should have been off the but board. Like, okay, oh, I know. Like, who would stupid. you not have picked? I would have taken Kucherov in my ranting in spot. I was ah, thinking of somebody, yeah. and I was like, fuck. See, I this is why I'm saying let's go two more been... rounds. No. <laughs> we had six. No. And I wanted... I, what if we simply did a, more? That's a great pick. Also, I think, I think I stole the Vassy pick. Uh, there's no Vassy way... Yeah, no, there's he was no way goalie. Vasilevsky should have been listen, my third pick. Listen, that's crazy. Sir Sturkin is leading the NHL in goaltending statistics this year. Vasilevsky's hanging around like eight or nine. So I feel like I think Shusterkin's goals against average is hey, less than two. Hey, can you hear Adam? No, I got two Stanley Cups plugged in my ears. Ooh. He's 17. Hey, I got four. two Stanley Cups plugged in my ears. Um, <laughs> I was surprised when looking for a winger, you didn't look at Marshawn or Pasternak. Pasternak would have been. Mm -hmm. And you're pick. like, who are the most consistently good goalies? And me, who wanted Connor Hellebuck, oh, uh, wanted mother. to say Connor Hellebuck. <laughs> and I'm surprised you didn't say Why Connor Why didn't they Hellebuck? say Connor Hellebuck? Oh, we should have won the best. That would have been a good pick. And my or right D pick, since I don't have one, uh, would have been Alex Petrangelo. We should take these teams and put them in a sim in NHL. Can we do that? And have them play. Oh, <laughs> I wonder you, if mine would You do don't have well. a goalie. <laughs> Oh, fuck. Yeah. <laughs> That's what I'm saying. Let's do that, it. That's your fault. Yeah. Oh, so I have an extra attacker the whole yeah. time? I guess. You got to play empty net. <laughs> Can you do that? No, we can't because the game will be like, you don't have a goalie. <laughs> <laughs> like we could do threes, a threes tournament with threes. these teams. Yeah. But That's, still he doesn't have a goalie. Have a goalie. <laughs> My older cousin. Uh, you have you, to pick a goalie. I, yeah. <laughs> Just, we, we didn't establish rules you before starting. Be I don't know, Dude. Pick a goalie. <laughs> My older cousin, I would play him at NHL, and I got to be Team Canada. He would be Team Japan, and he would kick my ass enough after a while that he's like, all right, and I'm going to pull the goalie for the rest of the game. 
nice. and he would still outscore me. Wow, <laughs> like, it was brutal. Wow, <laughs> that was fun. I enjoyed that. Great question. I remember, Chris. I never forgot. Hell of a he question. Listens. Do we want to do any more, or is that where we're ending? No, the uh, Victor Hedman's my goalie, by the way. Having McDavid and McKinnon's real good. Yeah, that's yeah. pretty Adam, that's dumb. Good. That's pretty dumb. I'm still so. taking my team all day. Same. Okay. <laughs> All right, I'm done. <laughs> All right, well, we're out of here for today. Don't forget, Monday, we will have a huge announcement. Agent Provocateur with Alan Walsh is also going to have a huge guest. That should be out, I don't know, tonight or tomorrow. Tomorrow. Uh, it's going to be out tomorrow. It's going to be spectacular. Don't forget to look out for the CJ Show. They will be back tomorrow as well. Anything up? Oh, we have a new show, and it's going to be called... Um... The Steve Dangle Podcast. Follow the guys on Twitter at Steve underscore Dangle, at Adam W-Y-L-D-E, and at Jesse Blake. Connection complete.